Hey guys, this is Samir for Digit.in and today we have with us the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Now there are certain differences between last year's smartphone and this year's smartphone. Uh, to begin with, the display is a bit bigger, you have a bigger battery and the megapixel count on the camera has been reduced. So does this smartphone deserve your attention? Well, we're about to find out. While you could argue over whether the Edge display adds any functionality, there is no denying that it makes the Galaxy S7 Edge look good. It's stylish and it looks different from any other smartphone in the market. But that's something Samsung had already achieved last year. The refinements brought this year include a 5.5 inch display, curves on the back and the S7 Edge makes for a very ergonomic device. That's easy to carry around. It's also sufficiently light, weighing 157 grams, so that it doesn't feel like a load when it's in your pocket. There are still issues with the build. It's a fingerprint magnet and feels slippery. Nonetheless, if you want a phone that looks good, feels premium and can stand out in a sea of smartphones out there, the Galaxy S7 Edge is the one for you. The Galaxy S7 Edge is IP68 certified, which makes it dustproof and water resistant over 1.5 meters and 30 minutes. A good thing is that the display of the smartphone is still responsive even when it's wet. A 5.5 inch display combined with the QHD resolution with a 534 ppi pixel density. That's what the Galaxy S7 Edge offers. Like last year's device, the Galaxy S7 Edge has a crisp display which delivers smooth colors and the trademark AMOLED warmth. Now talking about the Edge display, it's a little disappointing to see that Samsung hasn't really made that many improvements or the app catalog hasn't grown exponentially compared to last year. I mean, most of the apps that are really interesting and that consumers would really like to use cost about a hundred bucks and uh, I'm not sure if everyone would like to invest in them just to have access to the Edge display. For the most part of our review or our use of this smartphone, we use the Edge display to maybe navigate the pre-installed Yahoo app that comes with it or just go through some of the frequent contacts that we like to call. But apart from that, the Edge displays functionality, especially with apps, is still a little lackluster. Coming to another disadvantage, especially when you use an app like Facebook, a lot of notifications or settings options rest right in the corner. And because it's the Edge display, you sometimes end up opening the Edge display rather than clicking on the settings button that you want to press. And sometimes even though you do manage to press the button, anything that rests towards the Edge that isn't a part of the Edge display gets a little inconvenient to use. The always-on display is a good feature, but it needs work. While you can have the clock or calendar on the display, when it's turned off, the notifications work only with some apps. Now, coming to third-party apps like WhatsApp and maybe a few more, they aren't a part of Samsung's always-on display. So the always-on display is nice if you want to see, let's say, only the time or your calendar. But if you have used a Motorola, phone in the past and you know how those notifications on those Motorola smartphones work with that always on display, we really can't wait for Samsung to adopt something similar. Coming to the micro SD card slot, yes, it's a boon that you have a micro SD card slot on the Galaxy S7 Edge, but Samsung has disabled uh, the adoptive storage that Marshmallow brings to smartphones, so you really can't use a micro SD card as your primary internal storage on this smartphone. And considering that the phone gives you only about 26 GB of usable storage, storage, it can get a little disappointing after a while. Like the Galaxy S branded phones earlier, Samsung is launching the Exynos variant of the flagship device. The difference in performance between this phone and last gen flagships is apparent in simple tasks like switching between apps or how smoothly and fast Facebook's instant articles open. But then it was just as fast last year, meaning it won't seem like a groundbreaking improvement. However, the S7 Edge is actually quite faster thanks to the faster processor and Android Marshmallow's performance enhancements. Gaming performance is very good on this smartphone. Android Marshmallow also brings a very definite improvement that Samsung phones have needed for a while now. The fingerprint sensor is now faster simply because it's integrated into the OS itself. Lastly, in regular tasks like social networking, texting, etc., the Galaxy S7 Edge has nearly no foils. In fact, any foils that you do see can be attributed to TouchWiz and Android rather than the processor and the GPU. There are also no heating issues on the Galaxy S7 Edge. Last year's Galaxy S6 Edge had a 2600mAh battery while the S7 Edge has a 3600mAh battery. One must praise Samsung for being able to keep the dimensions of the phone in check while increasing the battery capacity so much. The Galaxy S7 Edge can last for a full day of regular use. 
Samsung has claimed that the always-on display uses only about 1% of the battery and having finished my test, its claim seems to be about right. The Galaxy S7 Edge lasted me for about the same time with the always-on display turned off. Moving to the camera, Samsung compromised on the number of megapixels this time, bringing it down from 16 to 12. This does not affect the quality of its camera though. The image quality is great and the device focuses much faster under low light now. If Samsung can somewhat solve the split-second processing lag after the shot is taking, it'll probably have the best smartphone camera in the market today. So here's the million dollar question. Should you be interested in purchasing the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge? Well, if you're looking for the creme de la creme or the best smartphone out there running on Android that money can buy, then yes, the Galaxy S7 Edge is a great smartphone to own. It has really good hardware. Its performance is impeccable. The camera is great. It checks all the right boxes. And the cons that we have, well, you can call them nitpicking, but uh, the device is still a fingerprint magnet. Every time you use it, you're gonna find yourself using a soft cloth to clean the back because it gathers a lot of fingerprints. The edge display can get a little annoying for those of you that aren't used to it, and it'll take some getting used to, especially like we mentioned, uh, some settings that appear in the corner. And of course, the edge display still needs a lot of apps. The always on display can also be worked on like we've seen on Motorola phones to make it more functional. But what the phone brings to the table with its flawless overall performance, no heating issues, uh, stellar gaming, uh, everyday use, a day-long battery life if you're a regular user, and of course the fact that the camera despite being down to 12 megapixels takes some really really good photographs. So yes, if you are in the market to pick up a premium smartphone, you can definitely consider the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. As always, if you have a question about the product, you can let us know in the comment section below and we will do our best to answer those questions for you. Uh, you can also like this video if you've liked it. And as always, to see more videos like this one, you can subscribe to the Digit YouTube channel. We'll catch you in another video.